prepare to teach, lead an on-campus small group that's meeting on uh, Sunday, October the 11th. So if that's you, you got the right video and you're in the right spot. Uh, what we're going to do is just kind of walk through the lesson with you and kind of hopefully give you some things that uh, can uh, get you thinking about uh, your time of leading your group. Uh, we'll just try to suggest some things to you along the way, some things to think about in regards to the lesson itself, and maybe a couple of suggestions of how to exactly do that. So go ahead and print out that manuscript uh, of the lesson for Sunday. You should have received that in the email uh, that also has this video link with it. And you can get that out there in front of you. Grab your Bible and, of course, something to write with so you can take some notes as we go, along, go through this. Now, this series of lessons that we're studying on Sunday morning in our own, in our own campus small groups is those, obviously, that are complementary and fitting with what we're going through in our study of Judges. And the series of messages or sermons that we're going through Judges, I think you'll agree with me, uh, have been, been very challenging, uh, very insightful, and also helping us think through uh, what it means in regards to how we evaluate life and the things that we look to to live out life, especially in regards to being a follower of Jesus. And uh, so, so these lessons are intended to be able to uh, encourage us in that and to think through what we're learning on Sunday mornings together as well. And appreciate your leadership and providing that uh, teaching and facilitating, guiding uh, your own campus small group through that each week. So let's get started. Of course, this week's lesson is going to, as I said, be one of those that fit what we've been talking about on Sunday mornings as we continue to go through that series that we've entitled According to Me. And this week we're going to be looking at a passage out of the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 7. And on page 1, you've got your overview there. And as you read through that, you're going to see that this is really... Uh, some very serious stuff that we're going to be talking about on, in your own campus small groups on Sunday morning. Obviously, whenever we study the Bible, it's serious stuff because it's God's stuff. But I think you'll see as you in the subject we're going to be talking about here, it's very, uh, uh, very significant, very important for us that we all understand this and we understand what this lesson has to deal with and the truth that it's giving to us there. Because you see, what we're going to be talking about throughout this lesson is, is we're going to talk about our salvation and how... How do we get to heaven? How do we know that we're going to heaven? Uh, what does it take to get to heaven? We're, we're going to be answering those kinds of questions and thinking those through together as a group. Now, on page two, you've got an introduction, and that introduction is basically designed to help you uh, orient your group to what you're getting ready to talk with them about. It sometimes can be an attention grabber for you, and, it, and at times can help you make the transition from just getting moving from uh, everybody kind of arriving and getting settled in to really getting into your Bible study itself. For those of you that are following the 1030 uh, or in the 1030 hour, this introduction may not be as needful for you because you may can just transition from what you've talked about or what Brennan's talked about with us out of the out of book of Judges, especially as we look at the person of Gideon this week, uh, the Judge Gideon. And as we look at that and and you can just transition from maybe what you've just heard on, uh, in that 9 o'clock hour, the message there, into the lesson itself. But the, the thing that we're really talking about here, and the introduction is going to get to it, is wrestling with this question, what is, what is a Christian? What is it? How do we become a Christian? We, there's a term there used, genuine Christian, and don't be, misunderstand that. Now, when he talks about genuine Christian, it's not that there can be a ungenuine Christian. You know, you really, you're either a Christian or you're not. But in genuine Christian in the sense of how we look at things there. And uh, what does it mean to be a true follower of Jesus? Maybe we could put it in that way there. Or how do we become a follower of Jesus there? Now on page three, we're moving into teaching the text. And in teaching the text, we're going to be looking at, at a very short passage, but it has some very significant things there for us. It's Matthew chapter seven and verses 21 through 23. And there are, there are several points that we're going to make, basically three points that we're going to make out of this passage. And as I said, is we're going to look at what God tells us a Christian is. What is it? What does it mean to be a genuine follower of Jesus? And so uh, that's what we're going to be looking at here in that way. You know, one of the things I think we have to 
think through in regards to our setting that we will find ourselves in on a Sunday morning is we'll have many people there who have been involved in church for a long time. And one of the things that can happen to us that have been involved in a church for a long time, and even those that have grown up in church, so to speak, is that we become, it is easy for us to replace Christianity with churchianity. And not only in what we do and how we do it, but actually in what we believe and what we're trusting in, what we're depending upon uh, and for our salvation. And I think that's one of the things that we're going to need to wrestle with. You'll, you'll see the uh, teaching tip there, the graded, the shaded area there. Uh, that gives us some things to think about in that regards as well. And as you move into the, to the text itself, keep that in mind. Now, our first major point is this. Number one, genuine Christianity is not about talking the right talk. In other words, basically the point we're making there is gener- genuine Christianity is not having the right things to say. You know, again, going back to that Christianity versus churchianity, those of us who grew up in church, we've learned all the things to say. We've learned the right things to say. We've learned the right answers, so to speak. But Jesus makes it very clear. It's just not knowing those right words to use at the right time. It, Christianity and being a, a believer, a Christian, goes farther. It's more than that. It's more than just knowing what to say, the right words to say at the right time. And that's what we get into here. And, you know, uh, the the thing that, that you'll notice on page two, four there is as we get, so it talks about ask someone to read Matthew 7, 21. It says there, according to Jesus, doing the will of God is that what really matters. Now, obviously, there are going to be people say, yeah, doing the will of God, that that's right. That That's 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 what we want to do, right? Doing. The focus will be on doing. But you'll see the point here that Jesus is making is the will of God is that we put our faith and trust in Jesus for salvation. Uh, here are some verses to help you think that through because, see, the focus can often get, get on doing versus who we're trusting in, who we're depending upon, what we're looking to for our salvation. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes, uh, one time I heard uh, uh, someone describe it this way, and I think it's a very good, uh, good quick synopsis of this. Uh, they asked the difference between religion and Christianity. And they said, well, it's very easy. Religion is spelled D-O, do. Do this. Do it this way. Do it at this time. But Christianity is spelled D-O-N-E done. It has been done for us through what Jesus did on the cross by his death, burial, and resurrection. And it kind of helps us understand, uh, helps us move not into the focusing on the doing part as much as it is on what has already been done for us through the person of Jesus. Some verses here, some passage I think will be helpful and help keep some clarity in this. And I would encourage you to look at these and these may be some that you want to fold into your teaching time as well. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, really makes a great distinction between putting our faith, between faith, believing, and between doing and, and doing. Uh, also, John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, and then over in the Gospel of John in chapter 5, verse 24. Oftentimes, that's a verse I take people to who have made a, a commitment of faith in Jesus. I take them to that to kind of just men nail it down for them. And I think it's a good verse to help us think through what we've just been talking about here. Uh, and so that, you know, the, the, the will of God, and what we're talking about here, doing, doing the will of God, is the will of God for salvation. Uh, and obviously the Bible makes it clear that that's by grace through faith. Uh, good things are good, but we all know there's not enough good things that are going to get us into heaven. All right, and that folds into the next major point. And actually the next point kind of clarifies that doing the will of God. And that is genuine Christianity is not about doing the right deeds. Not about doing the right deeds. Uh, And by the way, don't miss that teaching tip there because we want to make sure that people don't misunderstand what we're saying there and don't, don't get focused on the doing versus what we're talking about now is trusting in Jesus. So genuine Christianity is not about doing the right deeds. Uh, And again, goes back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23, where it talks about there were some great things that that these folks said, we did this and we did this and we did this. And obviously Jesus' response was, hey, I don't know who you are. 
Uh, and uh, so there are many people that, that, that think they're going to go to heaven based on what they've done or what they are doing. But the type Bible tells us that, that just because they think they're saved by doing these things doesn't mean that they are. And on page 5, the discussion continues there. You, in fact, you go to Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 through 8, where actually Jesus said these are some of the things that his disciples were to be doing. So the things that they were doing, the things they claimed to be doing, were not, they were good things. In fact, they were things that God would have told them to do, that Jesus would expect it to have happened. Uh, but obviously there's something more there than just doing something there, uh, doing. Uh, the middle of the page there, it's got a statement that for you to say, and again, remind you, these things, when we say, say or ask, make them your own. They're, you don't have to use them verbatim. If you choose to do that, that's fine. But I want to call your attention to the question there because I think it's an important question. I think it's one that you, whatever way you turn to phrase it needs to get thrown out there for your group on Sunday morning. It says, if you ask the average person on the street what it takes for a person to go to heaven, what do you think they might say in response? And you know, you're going to get, and, and I think you would get, and I'd like your group to, I'd encourage you to let your group respond back to you on that. You know, people say, well, being a good moral person, uh, doing, doing right things, doing them the right way. Uh, maybe you think about going to church, reading my Bible, giving money. Uh, some would say, well, being better person than, uh, than, than, than someone else. In other words, not trying to be the worst person, but be better than the worst. <laughs> that's a great goal, isn't it? But, but that's kind of where somebody, people think about that. How do we get to heaven? You know, maybe my good, hope my good things will balance out my bad things. In fact, my good things will be better than my bad things. So on the kind of the scale of justice, you know, that little scale you see there, that, that my good things will outweigh my bad things. Obviously, we know that none of those things are what's going to get us to heaven. There's only one thing that gets us to heaven, and that is Jesus and who we're trusting in. And that leads us into the third major point. Genuine Christianity is all, all about who do you know. You know, it's not what you say, it's not what you do, or even how you do it, but it's who you know. Now, the word know here, we're using that word know in the sense uh, kind of synonymous with believe or trust. You first go, you know who Jesus is, obviously, that he is the Son of God, that he is the sinless one who offered himself on a cross as a sacrifice for me and for you, for, paid the penalty for our sins, took our, his sin upon himself. He who knew no sin became sin for us, Was died in our place, uh, was buried, and rose again. And knowing who Jesus is and putting our faith and trust in him as the only one that can forgive us of sins and make us right with God is what's going to get us to heaven. And that's the emphasis of that point there. There's a great illustration, by the way, on page 6, and probably one that a lot of people could connect with that helps us understand that there. So he makes us, and you see this bold printed in there about halfway, about a third of the way down on that page 6, knowing Jesus is what defines a genuine Christ follower. And, and I want to what you understand, we use the word knowing now, just not knowing about Jesus, not just knowing who Jesus is, but putting our faith and trust in him, depending upon him. So that knowing kind of equals trusting, believing there in that way. Uh, and down at the very bottom of page six, some good discussion there. And I want you to, to encourage you to look through that. And, but I also want to really encourage you to pay attention to page seven because there is a good summary of what it, what a, what it takes, what we need to know and what we need to, who we need to believe in for us to be sure that we're saved and we're going to go to heaven. And those are clear words that, Jesus, that, that God himself has spoken to us. So, so look through those verses yourself. Think them through for you. But also, I would, be a great, this would be a great way to kind of wrap up what you've been talking about there in your group. You might even want to pass the, write these verses down on maybe a three-by-five card hand them out to your group, and let different ones read them as you're wrapping up your discussion time. In fact, it may be, instead of going to the memory verse this week, this may be the way you conclude your lesson there. And, and let me just walk you through those verses. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In other words, every one of us is alienated from God. There's none of us that can claim to be right with God on our own. Romans 6.23 
the wages of sin is death. There is only one outcome for us apart from Jesus, and that's death, eternal death, separation from God forever. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were at our worst, there was no way that we can save ourselves, no way that we can make ourselves right with God. The worst that we could be, that's when God showed his love to us by having Jesus die on the cross for us. He gave his own life for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We, what we couldn't do for ourselves, Jesus did for us. The sinless one took our sin on himself and he gives to us his righteousness so we can be made right with God. John three sixteen tells us how that happens. For God so loved the world, gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life two two things to pick out on this whoever doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter where you've been no matter what you did what you've done no matter it doesn't matter about your background what country you're in what language you speak what nationality whoever means whoever whoever does what believes puts their faith and trust in jesus believes that he is the son of god who gave his life on a cross for them, they're trusting, depending upon them. And he nails it there in that verse. He says, they'll, he says they shall not perish, but have eternal life. Can't make it any clearer than that, can you? All right, Romans 10, 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Again, that whoever, everyone, settles it right there, doesn't it? And then Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For it's by grace you've been saved through faith. That sums it all up right there. The grace of God poured out to us through the cross of Jesus Christ. And we receive that grace. We accept the gift of salvation by faith, by believing, by trusting. Uh, application moment is there on page 8. So look that over. The handout is in page 10. Uh, the conclusion, I kind of, kind of made reference to how to conclude that. You see that there on page 9. Uh, hey, hey, we have a great time together studying the scriptures. Again, uh, this is a very, very uh, significant lesson for all of us. And I don't care if, if you've been a Christian for, uh, if you may say, well, I've been a Christian for 30 years. Do I know I need to hear this again? You need to hear this again because salvation should never get old. You should never get over being saved. You should never get over uh, your salvation. And there will be those in your on-campus small group, I can almost 100% guarantee it, who are either unclear about their salvation or who've never put their faith in Jesus. What a joy it would be to see either someone get clarity about that or those that step across the line of faith. Have a great time studying together, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. I'm hanging on, I'm leaning in to you